you were born in Thailand, I think that's correct. I was, when, yeah. Yeah. When did fashion first sort of come into your consciousness? My parents are Chinese, and I was born in Thailand just by geography. But then um, I grew up in Southern California, Huntington Beach, to be exact. And um, you know, growing up in the suburbs and um, uh, first generation um, immigrant, and you know, really living when they, when you say like uh, when when they say like taking it to the streets literally we're like living hand to mouth you know and um and growing up and my my mother was a seamstress in a factory and my father like was knocking on uh doors to like try to find work and you know really just making ends meet and and growing up in that type of environment fashion never existed it was just survival it was just like day to day and i um but for some reason I always was fixated with clothes. I remember my mother being a seamstress and um, bringing, home, uh, bringing work home and I would just stay by her side and stay by that sewing machine and listening to that purr of the sewing machine and, and every time she would uh, get a break I'd be like, oh mom, can you fix this? Can you cut this off? Can you like take this in more? And that's how it all started. You know, it was always an adaptation or, or trying to alter what I saw. And, and, and make it right for myself, the proportions, just like the lines, the silhouette. And I didn't know what it was. It was just like this, this five-year-old and uh, his mother and in Orange County, California, there was no fashion. It was just myself, the suburbs, my mother, and a pair of jeans, you know what I mean? Or a sweatshirt or, 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 or back then even, I, I started to do, uh, uh, vintage shopping or as they say goodwill or uh, charity shops as they call it here i think um so I, I don't know where they all came from it was just like this need this 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 desire this i had to go find some i had to find this i'm interested because it seems clothes were such a big passion for you but that wasn't what you went on to do when you started your education like you did business i believe you were at um, california state university I think yeah that's yeah for three years it was wasn't it before yeah you changed. you're looking at a, 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 a business school dropout <laughs> <laughs> i didn't even know fashion existed i just thought that you know these stores are just came out of the blue these these, these clothes came out came from gods or like you know it's just like who who, who, who works and who makes all these clothes? Not I, you know what I mean? Not anyone from um, where I come from. And um, so just putting that on the side, you know, and using it more like as a hobby or, or like a, a, or a therapy, you know, um, shopping. Um, I had to like kind of decide what I wanted to be. And coming from um, first generation Chinese um, American upbringing, it was, there was a couple of things you could be. You could be a doctor, a lawyer, or a business person. And I think I chose the least of the evils because it was the most vague. It was like trying to, uh, trying to mask this whole idea of not being ready to grow up yet, you know? So I went to business school and I realized three years into it, I was sitting in an accounting class one day and I was just like, I was getting panic attacks and like hyperventilating and I didn't know why. And, and people were just like looking at me and it's like, okay, I, I can't do this anymore. I literally shut the book, got up and left. Left class, walked out of class and in the college there was um, the department next to the business department was um, um, home economics, which they label now family and consumer sciences. Um, you know, teaching, learning strategies, cooking, nutrition, nursing, you know, really, really admirable um, uh, professions. but. I, I, I stumbled over there because I, I've always walked past the department I real, and I used to see clothes in, in, in the windows of uh, some of the classrooms. And um, so I went in and like, oh, you know, what do you guys do here? And this is, I just literally walked out of um, my past, <laughs> or walked away from my, my past, as I, I would say. And, you know, I, luckily I ran into the dean of the college and she said, oh, what's your name? And she was kind of quite shocked because there wasn't many um, males in this department. And I'm like, oh, you know, my name is so-and-so. And I just dropped out, I think, of business school. <laughs> and 
do you make clothes here? And what's what what what's what's all these dresses and 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 uh, mannequins that I see in this window? She goes, yeah, we we have um we have classes in pattern making and and beginning sewing and you know we have a little like uh, a little section of fashion merchandising, but we also have nursing and 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 nutrition and you know everything that encompasses family and consumer sciences. I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. Um, so can I uh, take classes in sewing and pattern making? And she goes, yeah, 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 come with me. <laughs> you haven't Takes, looked back since. Huh? <laughs> you haven't looked back Literally, since. I followed the lady into her office and signed up, signed my life away, and haven't looked back since. Was that quite a, it seems like it was a kind of spontaneous decision for you, but was there quite a lot of pressure that went with that? I've read in previous interviews that you said that was quite a difficult decision for your family, yeah. especially your, your mother, I think yeah. that's correct. Yeah, um, and when I made that decision to sign up to join this new college of home economics, my parents didn't know. They thought I was still in business school, you know, and I did this for two years without even them knowing. And one day, right before I was going to graduate, I had to, like, um, I guess, fess up to my mom. <laughs> and I remember that moment. She just, I told her, you know, mom, I, I actually am not in business school and I am taking sewing classes and pattern making classes. And just imagine, um, my mother, just to, um, just to give you a little bit of my mother, she is like, she is the salt of the earth. She's like um, the most traditional um, mother you could ever have. It's like, she's like a nun. I always thought that she would be an amazing nun because she does no wrong. She has no ill will. She works hard and she lives in her really beautiful, naive world. And, and she raised uh, six kids because I'm the youngest of six with uh, working in a factory, sewing piece goods for nothing, you know, working 20 hours a, a day. And when I told her what I was doing, she just cried. She just cried because it broke her heart because she said to me, um, Philip, well, she calls me Philip. <laughs> um, she says, Philip, you know, you, you see my hands? They don't even match a woman's hands anymore. They don't match my age. Um, these hands are hands of blood, sweat, and tears. And my dream for you, your, your, your sister, your brothers, is to, to, to be somebody, to have a chance. And you're my baby. And you sit here to me in front, face to face, and you tell me that you want to be me. I'm nothing. I'm nothing. No one looks at me. No one looks my way. All I do is work, and I work for you. And I mean, what was I going to say? You know, I think that um, all I could say was, Mom, it's not like that, you know? It's like, I'm appreciative and thankful, but it's not like that, you know? Uh, there's an opportunity. It's something that I love to do. So I graduated with a, a degree in home economics. <laughs> and I got my first internship at uh, Kationa Deli. And that was like crazy too. That was a fluke. And um, I had been working at um, Barney's New York in, in, in Orange County at that time, just retail, to pay for my shopping habits, you know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, we all know that. Um, and I was unpacking a box one day, and it was this label called Katia Nadelli. And I'm like, oh, this is interesting, because I, I identified with the, the aesthetic. But I thought, wow, is this Japanese? Is this like somewhere in a far distant land? And at that time, too, I had to like have a, find a, a company that I could intern with before I would get my degree. So I just naively dialed 401, which is information. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to spell this to you. K-A-T-A-Y, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And they're like, oh yeah, you know, um, hold please. And they gave me the number for, for the headquarters in Los Angeles. I'm like, great. It's not in outer space, you know? It's not in Japan. It's in uh, downtown LA. I called and I said, my name is so-and-so. I'm looking for an um, internship, uh, internship and I'm sure you're, you're, you want some free labor. So what can we do? And they called me in. I had like two um, Polaroids of uh, some, uh, some pieces that I had draped or 
finished projects on because I didn't know I didn't know I didn't know you had to have a portfolio I didn't know anything I was just like all alone and um, they looked at it they're like okay so you can start interning um, how about Monday and that was a uh, Friday I'm like okay great so I started to intern and then two weeks later they asked me to stay on and they were actually going to Premier Vision for fabrics and they're like when you come to Paris with us I'm like holy cow you know what's happening here so by this point you were definitely thinking about fashion as something you could do as a career as a no not no? yet not yet when did that come at this point I was gonna be an amazing assistant I just needed to be in the industry because I I, I wasn't in the industry yet I on one hand I have a, the pressures of my mother like you're a loser business school dropout you're gonna be nothing like me um, I had a stacking bills and then I had this opportunity to go to Paris to look at fabrics and then be in this world of which I had no idea what it was still. And I got in and it was like, oh God, this world is not what it was, it's what it seemed to be. It's not the world that they sell in magazines, <laughs> you know? It takes, it takes a whole lot of ugly to make something pretty. <laughs> and that's the, whole, that's the truth. Whole lot of ugly for pretty. I'm interested. Um in what satisfaction you get from your clothes. Do you find that you get more of a kind of a sense of, of happiness when you see your clothes on someone walking down the street than you do if you see them on a model on a runway? Or yeah, oh yeah. yeah. I'll tell you a funny, uh, a great story actually. It's one of my highlights. <laughs> um, um, maybe like three years ago, I was um, come leaving work and um, getting off the subway, the metro, and uh, it's a long day at work and I'm like just like kind of seeing doubles right now and get off the train walk up to the platform and from a distance I see this this lady with a briefcase and I'm thinking oh it must be death perception because she's looking kind of small but I recognize it was like uh, our clothes right away it was almost like head to toe it was like a uh, gray flannel suit but I'm like oh, I'm, I'm at oh god I may need to go lie down because she looks really short <laughs> and we can't be that far. So she walks up closer, closer, closer and I, I realize she was a dwarf and I'm like, wait a minute, how is this possible? Am I, am I even here? And I realize that she was buying the kids clothes and wearing it to go to work because that was her size and I was just like wow that was the ultimate praise. I'm interested by what you say about that kind of love-hate relationship with fashion because it seems to me that you kind of you have a very different relationship to fashion than a lot of other designers of your generation like people like to say that fashion it dies every twice a year and then it comes back it's all this new kind of trends whereas Particularly, I'd say, of your last two shows, you, you do seem to stay away from that. You're more interested in longevity and wearability and yeah. functionality. Yeah. Would you say that's the case? That's the case, for sure. You hit it right on the spot. You know, um, for me, uh, there's something so beautiful about temperance. You know what I mean? Being, things are temporary. Things are fleeting. But that is very different from disposable. Mm -hmm. You know, I love the whole idea of just capturing a moment, but then trying to... Um, trying to move that moment forward and that is through just evolution and, and really like what I do is um, I guess I would be an evolutionist right mm. you would keep evolving ideas and uh, what I love about what I do is the subject matter and it, it I can remember as as young as five years old you know I've always loved clothes I only knew it as clothes, clothes you put on and clothes you, 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 your clothes you use to kind of transform you from day to day. And it wasn't until I got into the industry that I, under, that I realized that clothes, fashion is the context in which clothes kind of uh, lies. And it's been quite a struggle for me to like uh, separate the two and not get confused. And, you know, I've been working really hard on myself just to separate, but at the same time accept the fact that clothes lives in the context of fashion. Mm -hmm. And um, so 
to the present day, I feel like you know I'm getting a better hang of it. Like, listen, it's not personal; it's just fashion. That's all it is, you know. But at the end of the day, my love is clothes. I want to talk to you、um, about your last collection,、mm-hmm. and I read that one of the inspirations behind that was the kind of a superhero, a comic book reference. Yeah. Um, and there was that kind of superwoman aesthetic. I、yeah. wanted to talk to you. Do you have this kind of view of woman that sees her as strength and power? Yeah. What yeah. is your kind of view of femininity of woman and what she can be? I'm gonna say it. Blanket statement. I think women are the stronger sex. It and I only say this because, out of experience, out of. Like childhood,、um, you know, just also observation. You know, women are amazing. They're incredible. You know, my mother is my hero, my heroine. My business partner, she's a heroine. You know, my best friends, the heroines. You know, and it's like this collection was like for the hero heroines that live amongst us, day to day, every day. You know what I mean? And of course, we wrap it up in this marketing jargon to make it. Catchy, but the reality is, the baseline is the truth is, I always make clothes for these women and these men, you know, the ones that live every day and the ones that、uh, go from day to day, and the ones that accept the fact that, you know, they need to be present every day to receive the next opportunity.、So、that's what I do.